Hey, this is Andrew, and I'm going to bring you uh, a house set review for Winds of Exchange today. We're going to be looking at Equidon, the new house in Winds of Exchange, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go through all the cards in Winds of Exchange uh, for Equidon and talk about them. So, um, yeah, when you open up a an Equidon deck, or when if you're sitting across from one, here are the kinds of things you can expect an Equidon deck to do. Um, it's going to steal from you. Uh, it's going to steal your Amber. It's going to have some capture, but some steal as well. Uh, there's going to be probably some efficiency in it uh, in, in terms of being able to um, being able to get extra draws or uh, other, other just some speed effects. Um, it's probably going to have a good Amber generation. And uh, there's a trading style of disruption that it can do. So this, this could be in the form of uh, playing cards out of your hand at a cost to the Equidon player um, or um, trading things back and forth between you taking control of your artifacts. That, those are the kind of things we've seen in Shadows before. So... Uh, Equidon is probably most directly comparable to Shadows, but uh, but there is definitely a distinct flair in Equ in Equidon that uh, that wasn't present in Shadows. So in fact, we we might even like that would be a fun exercise as we're going through. Just be like, okay, what Shadows card does this remind me of for a lot of these? Because there are, but uh, it's it's also ha again has its own distinct flavor. Uh, so they could not have done this same thing in Shadows. Okay, at least not and have it feel right. Uh, let's see, if you open up a deck with Equidon, I think a nice house to get with it would be Sanctum. I will say, I, I'm a little iffy on that only because I feel like Sanctum is overall under the power curve in this set, as, it, as actually in most sets. But there is some good, uh, there is some good synergy in uh, Sanctum's ability to hold the opponent off and uh, and make them uh, stockpile Amber, which could result in, say, a good closed-door negotiation or something like that. Um, I also think Unfathomable is a good candidate just because if you are combining good some efficiency with good Amber control with really strong disruption, uh, that can be really effective. Uh, let's see. Legacy card, not applicable. This is the first set they've appeared. Maverick, I, I think Scoop Up would be a fun Maverick to have in Equidon, uh, especially with some of their weird stuff they have going on. It, it could be quite good. Um, okay. So let's, let's get to it. First here, we're going to go rares to commas. We're just going in numeric order of the, of the card numbers. So first one we have is Ambitrage. It's an artifact. It's a power. It makes your keys cost plus one. And during your draw card step, refill your hand to one additional card. Um, that's the kind of thing you might see in Logos. It's extra powerful because it's on an artifact, so harder to get rid of. However, um, it has this cost of your keys cost extra. And that can really throw things out of whack. Um, so I find that very interesting. Um, I have not had a deck that is very good that uses this, but it is a rare, so that, that's not shocking. Um, <clears throat> but And that's a good example, too, of the you get a benefit, but there's some detriment tied to it, which is which is a really fun space. It's a, it's a good design space. I'm glad they're doing they're exploring that. Okay. Antiquities Dealer is a three-power human merchant with action gain two if you control at least one artifact. Um Last video, in the Brobnar video, we talked about Frost Giant, which brings in ready and fight effects, and uh, it can bring them from Mavericks, it can bring them Legacy, very cool. Uh, Antiquities Dealer does another interesting thing, it'll bring in uh, Legacy artifacts, and in this case, they have to be Legacy Maverick artifacts, because there are no Legacy artifacts that aren't Mavericks to Equidon in, in Winds of Exchange, so... So Antiquities Dealer brings in Legacy Maverick Artifacts, which is just an incredibly fun uh, mechanism. So it, it does that in deck generation. Uh, they show up as Legacy Mavericks on the card, 
Um, for a lot of players, this is the only way you're going to get a Legacy Maverick because they are so rare, uh, is if you get an Antiquities Dealer, which is already rare, but but uh, then you're guaranteed at least two. I think you can get three Legacy Mavericks. It's, it's just very cool. Uh, okay. <clears throat> anyway, oh, and I was just saying that and Frost Giant, those are the only two that I'm aware of that, that operate quite like that. Uh, but I love that as a mechanism, and that's the kind of thing you can do in a, a unique deck game with, you know, an algorithm generating it uh, that you could not do in, um, in say, Magic or, or Pokemon or something. So uh, I love cards like this that are really highlighting what makes Keyforge different from everything else. Okay. Avid Collecting. It's an action with an amber. When you play it, you return a friendly token creature to your hand. Very nice, if, especially if you've tokenized something that you that you really want. Uh, it, it can be a nice benefit. So I, I think that's a fun card. Conductor's Arroya. Okay, um, let me see if the where the artifacts are that go with this, and I'll just pull them out because I think that they are special rarity. Yeah, here they are. I'll, I'll pull them out. They come later. Um, but if you get Conductor Jeroya, you are guaranteed to get all three of these artifacts. So it's really a built-in four-card combo. And I think it's overall just okay, but let's talk about what it does. And I'm going to jump ahead to another card too, Sandhopper, out of order, because it just makes sense to, to do it here. Um, and I have a, yeah, I should say I have a deck that is fairly, pretty unique. In, in what it can do with this. But um, let's, let's talk about the raw card first. So Conductor Jeroya is a five power Getrukia merchant that says after reap, ready each friendly buggy artifact. Okay, so what's a buggy artifact? Well, that's why you get all three of these. And it's a cool, it's a really cool theme thing because it's like, I guess these are traveling musical insects, I think. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they're all buggy vehicles. And, can, oh, maybe it's a train. I see. It's a train, not a, wow, I'm a dummy. Okay, so so he's the train conductor, and the buggies are in the train. I think that's it. Anyway, um, so you have three of these. You have uh, Shigzizo buggy that has action. So these each have, these are each buggy vehicles, and they each have an action that has you do a seemingly negative effect to get a positive effect. Uh, so Shigziso says destroy a friendly creature if you do gain two. Shiznyasi says lose one if you do draw three cards. And Shizyoku says reveal two cards from your hand. If they share a house, discard them and make a token creature. So, so you could kind of do this in an order where you reveal two cards from your hand if they, sh they share a house, so you discard them. That's kind of nice uh, hand filtering, but you had to discard two cards, and then you make a token creature. Then you destroy it to gain two, and then you lose one and draw three. So you've ultimately lost, you've discarded two cards, but you drew three. You made a token and you destroyed it. And you gain two but lost one. So at the end of the day, you come out one card and one amber ahead for for having done all three of these. And you can do it again after you reap with the conductor. So at the end of the day, you come out one card and one amber ahead. Uh, where it really becomes interesting, there's a couple places where it starts to become interesting. One is uh, if you... Obviously, if you're discarding two cards and then drawing three, hopefully you're discarding the two worst cards in your hand to get three new cards. So, uh, and in a good deck, that, that probably means getting three cards that are better than the ones you discarded because you picked which ones to discard and now you're getting three more. So hopefully, and probably you're discarding off-house cards and maybe if one of the cards that you drew is in-house, then you're definitely ahead you know, you get to play one more card this turn. So, um, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a nice benefit. 
So likely the coming out one card ahead is, it's very likely you're coming out at least one playable card ahead, which is great. You're coming out one amber ahead. Second, if you can make a token creature with a nice destroyed effect, or just in general, if you can be destroying a card with a nice destroyed effect, you, you're you still coming out ahead, right? Because you're, you are gaining a token creature, you're destroying a creature, but you're destroying the creature you choose to destroy. Okay. I'll just add in, there's another card, it's totally, um, it's not tied in in terms of how it gets into your deck. It's a, it's a, an uncommon card called Sandhopper, but it is a buggy vehicle. It's an artifact and it's a buggy vehicle. So it is affected by Conductor, even, even though um, <clears throat> these three go with Conductor and Sandhopper doesn't. Conductor can still ready the Sandhopper. And Sandhopper lets you return a friendly creature to, to its owner's hand. And if you do, you may play non-Equidon creature from your hand. So there, even, you're getting maybe some more benefit out of the cards you drew if you have this in there, there as well. And you get to ready it and use it. So so that makes it even better, even sweeter. Um, I, I have a deck, and there are very few decks like this in the world, but, but I, mine isn't the only one. Uh, I have a deck that has this with Cadet, and um, the the interesting not Cadet. Wait, is that right? Um, yeah, Cadet. So the interesting thing that can happen with Cadet is that if you so Cadet is a is a Star Alliance token that's one power and has destroyed uh, <clears throat> ready this creature this token creatures ready cadets highest powered neighbor so it is possible to make that token creature put it next to conductor destroy it ready the conductor and now you can actually rule of six and i've, I've had multiple games where i've been able to rule of six uh all five of these cards um i think you don't end up rule of sixing all all five of them like some of them you use five times. I don't remember for sure, but it ends up being really fun uh, and quite a long-term turn, actually, uh, but uh, kind of a cool combo. And and this is why I like imagining them as musical, uh, you know, as him as a musical conductor is because you can just see like, do, 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 just there's like a, a rhythm going. Uh, okay, so that's kind of crazy. It's a lot to pull off. And so I don't know about that. It'd be interesting to see, obviously, because the only one of these that references tokens is Shizyoku. So they could bring this back in a future set with a with Shizyoku replaced. Um, I don't know if they will. Uh, I and I actually just don't know. I don't think they put this in Grim Reminders, but I don't. I actually don't know. So, um, yeah. Anyway. There you go. There's the conductor. There's the buggies. That's all the buggies that exist so far. Um, but they're, it's, it's really fun. It's a fun setup. We, again, dipped into some specials and, and uncommon. We'll go back to the rares now. All right. Corner of the Market. is It's a very strong card. Uh, I commented on Discord the other day that I hadn't seen a lot of games closed out with Corner of the Market, even though we thought there would be. Uh, and a couple people were like, you haven't? Where What rock have you been hiding under? So... I, I believe it. It's a strong card. I believe there are games being closed out with this. I just haven't seen a lot of them. But Corner of the Market is an action. When you play it, it says during your opponent's next turn, they cannot play cards. And each time they discard a card from their hand, they may instead archive that card. So your opponent just can't play cards on their next turn. That's insane. Obviously, they can still use their stuff, but that's a really good effect. Uh, they, they get the benefit of they can reveal cards and archive them. So there is a benefit to them, but yeah, uh, you getting an extra turn after this, you know, even the, um, there's the, in, in Grim Reminders, there's the new artifact that lets you take an extra turn in exchange for <clears throat> your opponent drawing 10 cards. Um, obviously like, I, I think, and it purges itself. I think that's less strong than this because this uh, unless they have stuff on the board but really this gives your opponent like your gives you an extra turn a second turn almost uh it's it's really strong 
Um, yeah, almost too good. Okay, Cursed Relic is an artifact, an item. Uh, it enhances with six amber tokens, amber pips rather. Um, but you can't play it and it can't be discarded from your hand except through card abilities. So it effectively chains you um, and you need some card ability to be able to discard it, uh, which is a little rough. Um, again, I haven't seen a lot of decks. Actually, I should say Zoc uh, played a, a deck for Archon against me last week um, that that had Cursed Relic, and I, I think he might have gotten it early and been kind of chained by it. Um, so it can be, it's, I mean, six Amber Pips is really good. And if you have some way to somewhat reliably get rid of the Cursed Relic, then, then that's, that's very good. <clears throat> okay. Envoy of a Query. This one I think is, is kind of dumb. It's a five power Gatruka politician. After it reaps, you can swap it with one of its neighbors and you also swap all Amber damage counters and upgrades on these creatures. I just haven't seen this be good, uh, or matter in any way. It's kind of interesting, but I, yeah, I just don't think it's good. Flea Market. This one's really interesting. It's an artifact and location. It has action. Look at a random card in your opponent's hand. You may give your opponent one Amber if you do play that card as if it were yours. That's crazy. Um, at the very least, you're getting a little information. But uh, if you can get more value out of that card than uh, essentially letting your opponent steal one from you, uh, then boom, you're in business. So it's, it's a really good effect. Uh, and very interesting, very cool space. And it really makes your opponent think like, ah, can I hold this card in my hand? I, I, I want to save it for the right moment. Maybe I should just play it now and get the value uh, if they have a powerful card. Uh, okay. Freelancer is an upgrade with an amber. It says that at the start of each turn, the active player takes control of this creature and the creature may be used as if it belonged to the active house. Um, that's pretty cool. Really interesting to use on... Uh, creatures. It's essentially a one creature whirlpool, uh, but yeah, really interesting to use if you have like a lot of capture because you you can capture under the creature, but then it goes to your opponent, so they don't want to kill the creature and you don't want to kill the creature. It, it creates a funny situation. <clears throat> um, yeah, really interesting. Or if your opponent just has a really powerful card that you don't think you'll be able to get rid of, this might be a way to say, okay, well at least we both get access to it. All right. Insurance policy uh, gives is an upgrade that gives the creature it's attached to destroyed. If it is not your turn, gain four amber. When you play it, you lose an amber. So you basically take a good creature and say, okay, well, um, my opponent can either leave this creature on the board or they can give me four amber, which is nice, uh, potentially very nice. And if you can play it when you don't have amber, then you, the lose one doesn't even hurt you. Okay. Uh, Mollusk Caller is the rare that's tied to a token. Uh, so it's a four power Gatrukia with four armor. And after it reaps for the remainder of the turn, each friendly strange shell gets plus three power and loses all abilities. So the, uh, the token that it's attached to strange shell is a one power beast with four armor that can't fight or reap and it has action. You put it into your hand. So it's kind of like a, a, an archives on the board, um, I, it seems like this this hasn't been a done a lot of work. Um, it's not a, it doesn't seem like it is contributing to making decks very powerful. Um, it's it's very, it's interesting. I just don't think it's very good. And uh, you know, and Mollusk Caller doesn't make it better. So really, so uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of bad. Um, there's a deck that won a Vault Tour that has this token. Uh, it also has three sand hoppers, and so I think some of it is is uh, that sand hopper is really good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Certainly interesting. Okay, uh, staff up is an action that says for the remainder of the turn, are we into? Oh, still rare. For the remainder of the turn, when any amount of amber would be added to your pool, that make that many token creatures instead. That's pretty interesting. Normally, I probably want the amber rather than token creatures, uh, but it depends on the token creature. I mean, if you're gonna, if you can do this with a uh, prospector and then mass buyout or something like that maybe it's worth it could be quite good but <clears throat> um it's an interesting trade-off talent scout is very good so this is an uh, a two power gatrukia with uh, one amber pip on it um which is kind of unnecessary i don't think it needed that to be good 
But um, when you play Talent Scout, uh, it can be used as if it belonged to the active house. <clears throat> it's versatile. But when you play it, you look at your opponent's hand and play a creature from it as if it were yours. Your opponent takes control of Talent Scout. So you get to play the creature of your choice from your opponent's hand, and they get this two-power versatile creature instead. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting space. And just think about like how good... Uh, I mean, this is not quite as good as Lateral Shift, because Lateral Shift gives your opponent no benefit, and um, and it can play any card type. But this is getting close to that good. Uh, and, and I think Lateral Shift is, a, is one of the best anomalies out there. And... Um, and then, uh, or, or think, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like Merkins, too. It could be kind of like Merkins, but, uh, again, it doesn't matter. The, well, it, it, you get to actually look through their hand and pick a, a creature, so uh, better in that sense. So, yeah, it's quite good. And there are some combos in the, in the house where you can potentially, you know, do it multiple times per turn or certainly multiple times per shuffle. <clears throat> okay, the Amber Road. This one's weird. It's an artifact and location. It has Omni put one trade counter on the Amber Road. And remember, anytime you see a weird like counter, like trade counter, that's not it's not a counter. It's not a real thing. It just means count. Just any counter is fine. So you put a counter on Amber Road, and you gain an Amber for each counter on it, and then you give control of it to your opponent. Now that the, a couple interesting things here. Unlike a, a card like a. Uh, uh, Spangler Box, which has a, you know, this give the artifact to your opponent thing, um, Amber Road is, is Omni, so they don't have to go into this house to take advantage of it, so that's interesting. But also, uh, it's good to remember with anything like this, you're using it, you're passing it to the opponent, you're not readying it at the end of your turn because it would ready, because, because you're not controlling it. During step four of your turn, you only ready <clears throat> cards you control so your opponent can't probably can't use it on their next turn uh but they'll be able to use it two turns out so it's interesting um it's it's really tough if you're using it to go to check for key three that might be good otherwise it tends to be pretty risky uh but if you're just playing casually for fun it can just make for a really fun game too kind of like gambling then so yeah weird card uh token of appreciation is an action when you play it you make a token creature and then you forge a key at plus seven of the current cost reduced by one for each friendly token creature so if you can make a lot of tokens uh, this could become a free key cheat or at least a discount even if you're playing a couple extra you know key charge is is a great card and it costs one extra to, to forge a key so um, <clears throat> yeah I think I think this is often a very good card Tourist Trap is an artifact and location. Uh, when you play it, you make a token creature, and it has action. Choose a friendly token creature and an enemy creature. If you do, swap control of those teachers. There's that trade mechanism. And it, gosh, I said we might compare to Shadows. Uh, I don't, that doesn't really compare to Shadows. That doesn't really... I mean, it's a key cheat. Um, Talent Scout compares to, like, Merkins, um, I guess. Um, so like some of these things compare to shadows, but certainly not all of them. So, uh, yeah, very, very distinct flavor. Um, okay. Transitory philosopher. Okay. This kind of looks at, like shadows a little bit. It's a five power Gertrukia philosopher that has action steal one for each enemy artifact. So that's a little extra, uh, could potentially not be able to steal at all, but oftentimes it'll be able to steal more, which probably just means your opponent's going to kill it. But at five, they at least have to work for it. Okay, exchange program. This is a fun one, and I always think I'm, I'm as I'm going through. Well, I'm looking at which cards like reference tokens because those ones can't come back in a future set unless that set uses tokens. And I could imagine them bringing back tokens in a future set, but I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll be every set or even every other set. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Um, anyway, exchange program doesn't have any token reference, so it'll probably be back. It's an action with an amber. Uh, oh, and by the way, we're into uncommons now. This is the first common we've seen other than Sandhopper. So when you play it, you choose a friendly flank creature and an enemy flank creature, and if you do, you swap control of those creatures. That's really cool. It's a fun card. 
<clears throat> again, Whirlpool for two, two little creatures you pick. Exoshell System is an artifact and item. <clears throat> when you play it, you make a token. And it says each friendly token creature gains elusive. Uh, Gazdrucho the Arcane is a three power cyborg with action steal two amber. Flip Gazdru Gazdruccio the Arcane face down. It becomes a token creature. So this can't come back. But uh, action steal two is real good. And at three power, I mean, that's like, it could happen. Uh, but it, but then it turns into a token. That's kind of, that's kind of weird. Um but interesting. So, yeah. I don't know. What do you do? Man, what do you do if you... Uh, I don't even know. Never mind. I know this has caused a lot of weird rules interactions. So, weird card. Uh, okay. Gazrahi Blacksmith is a four-power Gatruki Artisan with Elusive. And it says at the start of each player's turn, that player chooses to either make a token creature or draw a card. Um, yeah, this is a fun one. Um, obviously, it's helping your opponent as well. Uh, and that happens, by the way, before you would choose a house. Um, but at the same time, like, if your token creature is better, certainly if your token creature is better than drawing a card, uh, then you can get more benefit here. Uh, in fact, I have this in a deck with Prospector, and I usually would rather make a token because uh, what, I, what I'm looking to do is burst draw. Uh, and so I basically am trading current draws for future draws where I can burst. Um, okay, Equiji Outpost is an artifact with an amber. It's a location. This one's real good. It, it has a action, put a friendly creature on the bottom of its owner's deck. If you do draw three cards, three is a lot. I think they could have said two and it would have been fine. Uh, yeah, three is very good. Market Crash uh, is an action. When you play it, you destroy each non-token creature and then you gain two chains. Nifflepaw is an upgrade with an amber. It gives a creature after reap. Destroy this creature and attach Nifflepaw to another creature. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Out negotiate. Here's another one of these um, kind of trade abilities. So out negotiate is an action with an amber. When you play it, you choose a card in your opponent's discard pile. You steal Amber equal to the number of Amber bonus icons on that card and put that card on the bottom of its owner's deck. So you're getting a steal, but you're giving them the card back for later. Um, yeah, that's. I think it's pretty interesting. And, uh, and yeah, I, I think it's a, an interesting card. And it gives kind of like a... I mean, it's a, it's a, in a way, it's a steeper punishment of, say, Virtuous Works than... In furnaces because you're actually stealing the amber but then they they get the card back in the end so uh just depends on which way you look at it okay pull up stakes this is an interesting one this is like unfathomable stuff almost or uh or or uh, untamed so it's an action with an amber and when you play it you shuffle two friendly creatures into their owner's decks and then you return four enemy creatures to their to their owner's hands um now, it's interesting, it's important, it says to, to their owner's hands. So, for example, if you, uh, if you play this with, um, what's his name, with uh, Talent Scout, you can get the Talent Scout back to your hand this way, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, interesting. And, and I always, I like a, a, something like this because it's, it's kind of a pretty balanced effect, right? Your opponent gets the cards back right away. Um, your cards get shuffled. But if you're able to put, like, cards with reap and fight abilities into their hands and cards with play effects into your deck, uh, then probably you're coming out ahead. So um, it's kind of balanced, but because you're in control, you get to warp it to your side. Puzzling Trinket's an interesting one. It's an artifact and item. It enhances with two amber icon, two bonus ambers. Um, and it says, when you resolve an amber bonus icon, you may choose to resolve it as a capture, damage, or draw icon instead. Um, and that's that's really interesting and cool because you can um, just as the situation dictates, you can uh, <clears throat> you can uh, use this to your advantage. And uh, so so for example, there are turns where you may be able to um, you may be able to prevent your opponent from winning by switching this to capture. 
or you kill something really important by switching it to damage, um, or you get to a combo by using draw. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of options here, um, and it's yeah, it's really fun. So I like it. Mm, okay. Oh, and there's an interesting thing I just hadn't even thought of that uh, I think Astron pointed out to me recently, which is if you play, <coughs> excuse me, if you play Talent Scout with Puzzling Trinket out, or, or really, yeah, but no, actually, no, that's the one that really matters. If you play Talent Scout with Puzzling Trinket out, where is Talent Scout? Where is he? You get to resolve that Amber Pip. You can actually capture onto the Talent Scout before you hand it over, which effectively is a slow steal. So that's pretty cool. All right, Scrap Scrounger is, is an interesting one. A four-power Katruki Artisan with After Reap. Swap an artifact from your discard pile with a card in your hand. It's extra interesting that it's not a May. So this this you would not want this in a Cursed Relic deck. Um, some cases it could be kind of interesting. I I don't love it because I usually I'd just rather have a, an effect that's good on its own. Um, but it's interesting that it exists. Uh, okay, Shizyoku Shizu Swapper. <clears throat> this one's weird. It's a one power Gatrukia with five armor. Um, so the, the goal here is not for it to uh, kill stuff, but for it to be very survivable. And after it fights, you swap control of Swapper with uh, the creature it fights. Um, so that's that's really weird and interesting. By the way, Swapper, this is actually a legitimate alternative spelling of... Uh, of swap. Um, so they're not totally crazy. All right. Trade secrets. It's an action. When you play it, you discard any number of Equidon cards from your hand and you steal one Amber for each card discarded this way. Nice. Steal effect. Shocking. Uh, Taya Arhi Esquire is a two power Gatrukia that gives each friendly non token creature destroyed make a token creature. Um, I have a deck with two of these. It makes a lot of token creatures. It's pretty crazy. Uncommon Currency is an artifact and item. When you play it, you swap, or when you action it, you swap control of Uncommon Currency and an enemy artifact. That's really interesting. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's a slower way to do this. Uh, and, and they ultimately could do this back to you if they want to go into Equidon. But it's, it's interesting. Auction Off is an action with an amber. When you play it, you purge an artifact and its controller gains an amber. Nice to have such strong artifact control in a, in a house. And this is at common, actually. This is our first common card we've seen. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty strong at common. Um, goes, yeah, it's right up there with, like, Reclaimed by Nature. Uh, although Reclaimed by Nature benefits you instead of the controller. So, uh, let's see. Belligerent Guard is an 8 power giant that enters play ready, which is kind of crazy. The downside is when you play it, your opponent draws a card. But it can be real nice to have an 8 power creature that comes into play ready. Alright, this one's pretty great. Closed Door Negotiation is an action with an Amber. <clears throat> it is what Bait and Switch was. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it has Steal 1 Amber. Uh, if you do and your opponent still has more amber than you, repeat this effect. Uh, and it, you know, bait and switch got errated to say, um, to say it, it can only fire twice. Uh, it, I think it got errated to say repeat the previous effect. <clears throat> this can still fire an infinite number of times. The downside is every time it fires, your opponent draws a card. So every time you steal, your opponent draws one. Um, for that reason, yeah, it's not as good as bait and switch used to be, but it's still, it's still good. It's still real good and interesting. So, uh, a fun card to have around. Okay. Thoshra recruiter is a four power Gatrukia soldier. After it reaps, you make a token creature. That's fine. Especially if you have good tokens. Forced Retirement is an action. When you play it, you destroy a creature. If you do, its controller gains one. Obviously, if you have a creature with a nice destroyed effect, this is like a double benefit to you. Um, otherwise, spot, uh, spot removal for your opponent can be really strong, even if you're giving them an Amber. So this is a, this is a nice card to have. 
Gemcoat Vendor is a six power Gatrukia Merchant with action steal one, deal one damage to Gemcoat Vendor. So again, like really similar, you could compare this to, um, to say a Yancey Yang, uh, but it, it has the downside that uh, it deals a damage to itself. So um, again, a little more of that. There's a trade-off. General Zaorha is a four power Gatrukia Soldier with skirmish and play if you're uh, for each forged key your opponent has, make a token creature. Again, this can be fine. I, I'm I'm not in love with it. Generous offer, on the other hand, seems quite good. It's an action that says play destroy a friendly creature if you do steal one. And again, if you can combine this with good destroyed effects, then you're like, hey, I'm stealing and getting more benefits. Um, <clears throat> so really nice in like a prospector deck or cadet or something like that. Hyron is an action when you play it you make a token creature and if there's a combined total of six or more amber between both players pools you archive higher on uh, yep wants you to both be rich okay mass buyout this is a this is a fun one it's an action when you play it you destroy each creature and then each player gains amber equal to the to half the number of creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way rounded up so if you destroy, if you have 11 creatures, you're going to get six amber from this, right? Uh, half of 11 is five and a half. You round up to six. Um, but your opponent can get amber from this as well. So uh, total double-edged sword. You really have to be careful to try to make this work best to your advantage, or you might need to discard it. But very interesting card. Uh, ornate Talking Tray is an artifact with an amber. It's an item. And when you Omni it, you destroy it and make a token creature. Um, this one's interesting. Yeah, it, it very much depends on what your token creature is, how good this will be, and what, when you should use it. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting, interesting card. Shopping Spree is an action that has you discard your hand and then draw a card for each card discarded this way. Shrewd Investor is a 4-power Gatrukia Merchant with Elusive. When you play it, you may have your opponent gain an Amber. If you do, capture 4. So you can compare this to like an old Bruno, for example, um, where it's Elusive and has uh, capture uh, uh, play capture 3. Here, uh, you are effectively capturing 3, but, but you're uh, adding an extra Amber onto it. So... Um, Got to be careful about that. Could be better for your opponent in the long run. And then um, Steward Suyane is the uh, two-power human artisan. It's the three-enhance creature for Equidon for Woe. And it has enhance, two, amber, and a draw. Which is, a, this is a really good one. Uh, if you get a couple, three of these, like you have a lot of amber floating around in your deck. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, the old Tinker is a three-power Gatruki Artisan with Elusive, and after it reaps, you discard a card from your hand and draw a card. There's a little bit of efficiency. The Visible Hand has you make two token creatures and then reveal your hand to your opponent. Uh, I got a deck where I have this with Mass Buyout and Prospector. It's fun to like reveal my hand, but then uh, get to pop the Prospector and... Uh, with mass buyout and draw some more cards so they still don't know everything that's in my hand. Or if you're playing like four cards, then what do you show them to and you're going to draw four more. Uh, Trading Frenzy is an action with an amber. A friendly creature and an enemy creature each capture three from their opponent. Um, you can use this in very interesting ways. Like, for example, the most obvious way is just uh, capture their amber onto one of your creatures that's survivable and capture your amber onto one of their creatures that's weaker that you're already going to kill. Um, so then you get the amber right back. But you can also combine with cards like, with a card like, uh... oh, and this will probably be, I, I should have said my favorite in-house combo, um, and I forgot, but I'll, I'll say this is it, I think. Um, uh, if you can combine with exchange program, suddenly you've, uh, you know, you're leaving their creature with three on it over there, but you're getting, uh, you're giving them your creature with three. So, uh, it turns out very lopsided in how it works out. 
<clears throat> all right and that's it for the regular cards there are three tokens to cover really quick I'll, I'll actually skip forward well no i'll do them in order so the first one is diplomat um diplomat is uh i don't love it it's a one power gachuki politician with elusive so it's already not very survivable not going to have a huge game impact and it has after reap each player gains one and um boy that is tough that is a tough one it doesn't even really help with closed door negotiation because um because you're you're not going to steal extra because you're each gaining one um so unless you have a hard stop this is it's tough to push your opponent ahead um any card that pushes your opponent ahead is is rough because they get an opportunity to forge before you do and even if you don't give them enough to forge, if you're helping them at all, they get a chance to stop you before you get to forge. So, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, a, it's rough. Um, Trader, also I'm not a big fan. It's a one power Gatruki Merchant with action, steal one ember, destroy Trader. Um, I mean, it's great if you can fire it. It's just at one power, I almost never see these go off. But the last one is real good. Prospector is good. Prospector is a one power human with destroyed draw card. And um, and that, I think it's best when you can stack them and burst the draw rather than uh, drip it. Um, but either way, every draw is nice, is pretty nice. And it, it, uh, it just means between making tokens and then drawing from your prospectors being destroyed, you're going to get through your deck pretty fast in a, in a deck with Prospector and good token generation. Um, and you're, you're probably going to flip multiple times. That's really fun. So I think, I think it's a great card for that reason. Um, and like I said, I don't love Strange Shell either. So I, I really think the only token in... Uh, we covered Brobnar last time. I like all the Brobnar tokens. The only uh, Equinon token that I really like is Prospector. Um, all right, so but but it's real good. Prospector is very good, and there's a lot of other good in Equidon. So usually I'm very happy to see Equidon. I'm just hoping that I either get Prospector or uh, or a token from a different house. All right, um, so that was all the Equidon cards in uh, in Winds of Exchange. Hope that you are uh, enjoying these videos and that you're getting some keyforge in when you get a chance. Uh, that you're able to uh, get out there and forge some keys. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.